Okay, in this section, what we're going to worry about is we're going to take this whole big discussion that we've been focused on. The focus has been structure determines function, or function determines structural possibilities, or what's required structurally, and kind of where do those two things um, mix. And we're going to look at them from the standpoint of, well, how do we design that structure? How do we take little teeny building blocks and from them um, create bigger things in terms of their in terms of their functions. We want to take pieces and parts, small building blocks, and build bigger things. Which from those we can build bigger things, and so on, and so on, and so on. So those are some of the things that we're going to focus on. So now we got a little bit of bait and switch going on here um, from a marketing standpoint. Where if you'll notice here at the top, as we talk about the chemical level of organization. So these levels we're taking from the smallest level all the way up to the biggest, which is a functional organism. But down here at the chemical level of organization, we're going to talk about the atomic level of organization. We're going to talk about the molecular level of organization. Now, the reason we call this bait and switch is because we said we were going to study chemistry, specifically inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, and biochemistry. Most of you would just say, I'm so done. And you, and you kind of vapor lock on us um, because you just have somehow in your mind, I, I can't do chemistry. But the reason this becomes important is because notice that we have these levels of organization. And you've got to understand level one to really understand level two to understand level three and so on. So it's important that you understand that. Because if we really break it down, as we study human physiology, human physiology is applied chemistry. Because we want to know how do these atoms get put together to make molecules and how do the molecules get put together to make cells. And how do these cells get put together to make tissues. And how do multiple tissues get put together to make an organ? Because an organ isn't one type of tissue. It's a mixture of tissues that all work together for, for one purpose. And then how do we take these organs and actually put them together into functional systems? Like we're going to talk about how does the, the larynx and the trachea and the bronchi and the bronchioles and the alveoli, how do all, all of those things contribute to our ability to take in oxygen and to get rid of CO2? How do the kidneys and the ureters and the bladder and the urethra give us a functional renal system which we don't live very long without? So all of these systems where we're putting multiple organs together and how do they help us? Right? And, so, and that's what most people when they take a human physiology class, anatomy class, that's probably the part they're interested in the most. But if you truly want to understand how things work and you want to understand as, as things around you, as topics come up, and you want to understand how does this drug work, okay, or how does this drug work, or how does this um, food supplement work, or doesn't it work? Okay, because you get you get bombarded with claims. Hey, buy this product. Look how good it's going to be. Well, really, does it does it really work? But by understanding the chemical level of organization and how it would affect your cells, and how your cells then do or don't use that stuff. Okay, how much do you actually get? Do you not get any? Do you get too much? But now you become a little bit better at your critical thinking by understanding, all right, what are these levels? How do the chemicals interact to make cells? How do the cells make tissues? How do the tissues make organs and systems? And then how do we get a functional organism? And then we want to expand that a little further. And, and it's a great image from your book where it shows we're going to take atoms like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. We're going to put them together to make molecules like DNA and molecules like RNA. We're going to put them together to make proteins. We're going to put them together to make fats. And we're going to put them together to make carbohydrates. And how do those nutrients that we take in our body help us? Why do we sometimes refer to some of those nutrients as bad and some of those nutrients as good? Um, some of them as more healthy. Some of them as less healthy. Okay, well, sometimes that gets overblown. Okay, that your body, it just looks at them as atoms and molecules. Okay, in some ways, yeah, it's, they treat them kind of all the same. Okay, and there are some, some exceptions to that, of course. But as we then take those molecules and make functional cells that have a specific structure, and now you know have a specific function, and we put those together, multiple cell types together to make a tissue, and then we're going to take those tissues and make an organ, okay, as, as is represented by the stomach here, and then we can make a functional digestive system in this case. So we have salivary glands and we have an oral cavity and we have okay, an epiglottis that keeps that stuff from going into our lungs and it goes down the esophagus and into the stomach. Okay? And we have 
accessory organs like the liver and we have accessory organs like the pancreas and those types of things. How do those all interact to give us a functional digestive system? And then how do all of the systems of the body give us okay, an organism? So it is important that you understand that so that okay, you can go backwards when it comes to our, and we're going to do that a little later in this module, we're going to discuss, well, how does disease affect all of this? And really, when we have a normal functional organism, which is based on normal, normal functional systems and organs and tissues and cells, when everything's right, okay, we're healthy. When we start getting different ways that we can mess with that situation, of everything working just right, whether it be external things affecting us, we call those exogenous things, like infectious disease, okay? or we can get endogenous things, stuff from the inside, like autoimmune disease, we're going to talk about that. Those start to mess with this perfect little level of organization structure. And when it does, we call that, yeah, we do, we call that disease. So we're going to look at some of those things here as we go along.